Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the visual field abnormalities the visual field abnormalities visual field abnormalities can be divided into scotomas pertaining to only one eye hemianopias wherein the defects are seen in both the eyes altitudinal defects whether superior or inferior or concentric contraction of the fields so visual field abnormalities can be divided into scotomas pertaining to a single eye or hemianopias pertaining to two eyes or altitudinal defects which may be higher, superior, inferior or concentric contraction of the fields. Now let us see and analyze each type of visual field defects. First let us start off with scotoma that is pertaining to one eye only. A scotoma or darkness is an area of impaired vision in the field with normal surrounding vision. So a scotoma or darkness is an area of impaired vision in the field with normal surrounding vision. A positive scotoma causes blackness. It suggests diseases of the retina especially the macula or choroid. Remember macula is an area which is highly sensitive for visual acuity. The highest visual acuity lies in the macula. And therefore, if the macula gets affected, the visual acuity is lost and it appears black, scotoma. So, positive scotoma causes blackness. It suggests diseases of the retina, especially the macula or choroid. Whereas a negative scotoma is an absence of vision, blank spot. It suggests diseases of the optic nerve. We have another scotoma which is known as physiological blind spot, Marriott's. The physiological blind spot is a scotoma corresponding to the optic nerve head which has no rods or cones and is therefore blind to all visual impressions. Since the optic nerve head does not contain rods or cones, it is blind to all visual impressions. So the visual, the physiologic blind spot is situated 15 degrees lateral to and just below the center of fixation because the optic disc lies nasal to the macula and therefore the blind spot is projected into the temporal field. The physiologic blind spot is situated 15 degrees lateral to and just below the center of fixation because the disc lies nasal to the macula and the blind spot is projected into the temporal field. The blind spot is therefore enlarged in papilledema and optic neuritis. Central paracentral and secocentral scotomas are all suggestive of a process involving the papillomacular bundle. The papillomacular bundle connects the macula with the optic nerve head. So you have the nerve fiber layer and then we have superior arcuate and super, superior and inferior and therefore if the superior and inferior arching fibers get affected you have the characteristic arcuate scotomas classically seen in glaucoma. So, central, paracentral and secocentral scotomas are all suggestive of a process involving the papillomacular bundle. If the superior arcuate and inferior arcuate gets affected, you get arcuate scotomas classically in glaucoma. So, these are the various types of visual field defects. You have central scotoma, you have the secocentral scotoma, so extending from the central area and going in a parallel way, secocentral scotoma. You have the junctional scotoma wherein the optic nerve is affected on one side. So you have a scotoma and then on the other side, the nasal fibers come over and slightly go to the same eye and then cross over. So it is the nasal fibers which come to the optic nerve and then cross over. So it causes temporal field defect. So on one side the optic nerve is affected so you get a scotoma on the other side because the nasal fibers come in and then go which is known as Willy Brandt's knee and therefore causes the 
temporal field defect. So this is junctional scotoma. And then uh, you have the homonymous scotomas wherein the scotomas are present on the same side. And then you have the heteronymous scotomas. And then you have the right homonymous hemianopia. As you can see the entire field but on the same side is cut off. This is known as homonymous hemianopia. Contrast this with the heteronymous hemianopia. Classic example is the bitemporal hemianopia which we see in the optic chiasmatic lesions especially the pituitary adenoma. Since the nasal fibers cross over, if there is a lesion affecting both the crossing nasal fibers, the temporal fields on both sides are lost which is known as bitemporal hemianopia, uh, heteronymous hemianopia, very classic of chiasmatic lesions especially pituitary adenomas. Then we have the congruous right homonymous hemianopia. Congruous means it is the parts are affected equally on both sides. So these are known as congruous right homonymous hemianopia. Then you can see here these are all incongruous hemianopias. One side it is like this, the other side it does not match to the eye. So incongruous hemianopias are more are seen more anteriorly, especially optic tract and lateral geniculate body. But as we go posteriorly, the shape of field defect on both sides become equal, known as congruous hemianopia. So the more anterior it is, it is incongruous. The more posterior it is, it is congruous. Then you have the right superior quadrantonopia, known as pi in the sky. If the inferior uh, nasal fibers get affected, we have the right inferior quadrantonopia. If the uh, superior fibers uh, gets affected, and then finally we have the macular sparing right homonymous hemianopia. You can see here the central area is spared which is known as the macular area. Macular represents the central field and therefore if the macular gets affected, there is a central visual field loss. This is otherwise known as tubular visual field loss. So tubular visual field loss could be either because of the macular involvement or it could be sometimes non-organic wherein generally when we move backwards, the visual field expands known as funnel shaped. But in persons who got psychiatric or non-organic visual field defect, they are not aware of this principle and they say even if they move backwards, they say it is of the same visual field loss is same despite going moving backwards. It is known as tubular visual field. So tubular visual field is characteristic of non-organic field defects and funnel shape is characteristic of organic visual field uh, defects. But tubular visual field loss can also be seen if the macula is affected because macula represents the central uh, field and therefore if the macula gets affected only the central field gets affected so it also can result in the tubular field defects an arcuate scotum as i said an arcuate scotum is a crescent tape defect arching out of the blind spot usually because of optic neuropathy optic neuropathy with a brunt of damage falling on the fibers forming the superior and the inferior nerve fiber layer so it causes superior and inferior nerve fiber layer arcuates classically seen in glaucoma. A junctional scotoma as I just mentioned is an optic nerve head defect in one eye central scotoma and a superior temporal defect in the opposite eye due to Willy Brandt's knee. Occipital pore lesions primarily affecting the macular area can produce contralateral homonymous hemianopic scotomas. Right, they, they were, we were so far talking about scotoma, that is pre-chiasmatic lesion, that is where one eye, only the field loss is seen only in one eye. Hemianopia is impaired vision in half of the visual field of each eye. So, hemianopia is impaired vision in half of the visual field of each eye. Hemianopic defects do not cross the vertical meridian. Hemianopias can be homonymous hemianopia or heteronymous hemianopia, example bitemporal hemianopia, optic chiasmatic lesion pituitary tumors. A homonymous hemianopia causes impaired vision in corresponding halves of each eye. Example, a right homonymous hemianopia is a defect in right half that is left right nasal and right temporal half of each eye. Homonymous hemianopia are caused by lesions posterior to the optic chiasma with interruption of the fibers from the temporal half of the ipsilateral retina and the nasal half of the contralateral retina. 
vision is lost in the ipsilateral nasal field and the contralateral temporal field. A heterodynamic hemianopia is impaired vision in opposite halves of each eye, right half in one eye and left half in the other eye. Classically, bitemporal hemianopia seen in optic chiasmatic defects, example pituitary adenomas. A homonymous hemianopia may be complete or incomplete. If incomplete, can be congruous or incongruous. A congruous hemianopia shows similar defects in each eye. The more congruous the field defect, the more posterior the lesion is likely to be. An incongruous hemianopia is differently shaped defects in two eyes. The more incongruous the defect, the more anterior the lesion. The most incongruous hemianopias occurs with optic tract and lateral geniculate lesions. A superior quadrantonopia implies a lesion in the temporal lobe inferior affecting the mayest lobe inferior retinal fibers, fibers known as pi in the sky. An inferior quadrantonopia pi on the floor implies a parietal lobe lesions affecting the superior retinal fibers. A macular that is central vision, a macular sparing hemianopia is one that spares the area immediately around fixation. It implies an occipital lobe lesion. Macular sparing may be due to collateral blood supply from AC and M MCA or extensive cortical representation of the macula. If only when the occipital pole is involved, macula can get affected, but usually macular is spared. That's why we call homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing occipital lobe lesion. Why usually the macular or central vision is spared? Because one, macula has got a wide representation, so very difficult for the entire macula to get affected. Second, macula is not only supplied by the PCA post cerebral artery, but perhaps by middle cerebral artery and anterior cerebral artery also. The normal visual field is a funnel shape, as I said in my just a uh, few minutes back. It's a funnel shape. So you see a defect like this, but as you go backwards, the field of vision expands. So the more backward you move, the more the field of vision. That is funnel shape. That is uh, that is a uh, that is a normal process. But in persons, the non-organic visual field is tunnel. Even if they go backwards, the visual field does not seem to expand. So it is known as tunnel shape. So the normal visual field is a funnel shaped, whereas the non-organic visual field is a tunnel shaped. Yeah, these are the these are the important concepts of the visual field defects. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. Uh, most of the important neurology concepts I put in a question answer format in my book Focus Neurology. It is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. Uh, it, is, it will be especially useful for orals. If you are interested, you can buy it online. But uh, I, I hope you have enjoyed the class on the visual field defects. So if you have really enjoyed it, please like it, share it and definitely do subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.